one here. Okay, to get started. Good. Um, kia ora and good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for being here. Gun crime is of increasing concern to our communities, to police and to the government. This government is committed to stopping violence and the impact of violent gun crime in our communities. So I'm pleased to announce today our intention to in introduce firearms prohibition orders. These will help ensure New Zealanders are safer as they go about their daily lives and business. Firearms prohibition orders will protect the public from harm by preventing certain high-risk people from accessing, being around or using firearms. Breaching the conditions of a firearms prohibition order will be a criminal offence. Firearms prohibition orders will be imposed by the courts following conviction for qualifying offences. Where the court considers an order to be appropriate. We're taking this approach to provide a layer of judicial oversight and ensure that those who have serious criminal convictions and are returning to the community have additional safeguards, that of being subject to a firearms prohibition order. Qualifying offences for a firearms prohibition order will include serious violence, serious firearms offending, participating in organised criminal groups or terrorism offences. This government is very clear that gangs and other violent criminals cannot continue to threaten, intimidate and exploit our communities. Firearms prohibition orders provide an additional tool for police to keep firearms out of the hands of criminals and keep our communities safe. Addressing organised crime more widely is also a focus of the government and as Minister of Police I'm steadfastly committed to prevention, redirection and intervention. So that means preventing our people from joining gangs, redirecting them when they enter the criminal justice system and, and intervening when they choose to join a gang. Through the Resilience to Organise Crime and Communities Work Programme, the government is taking an innovative approach to preventing future harm caused by organised crime. Using an evidence-based approach, we will continue to work on drivers such as poverty, mental health and addiction. Everyone in our community, in our country, deserves to be safe, and this is a very important mahi with and for our communities. Along with the firearms, prohibition orders will, will reduce harm, protect our communities, and enhance their well being. Perhaps most importantly, this mahi will help people in crisis and our vulnerable communities towards a better future. Thank you. I'll now hand over to Minister Farfway to talk about the second part of today's announcement. Kia ora. Ki poto. Na mahi. Um, uh, this morning I am also announcing that the Government will make changes to the Criminal Pro Proceeds Recovery Act and this will create new powers enabling the seizure and forfeiture of property of those involved in and associated with organised crime if police believe it's unlikely that legitimate income would be sufficient to purchase it. We have to do everything we can to ensure that crime does not pay. This new power will prevent those involved in organised crime from profiting at the expense of vulnerable New Zealanders. Police will get the power to apply to the courts for the seizure and possible forfeiture of property if they believe it was unlikely to be purchased with legitimate income. If the courts greenlight the police request, the onus will be on the, those who claim to own that property legitimately to prove that very point. If that cannot be proven to the court, the property, property will be forfeited to the, crown, forfeited to the Crown, they will be sold and the proceeds will go to the Proceeds of Crime Fund. And the fund is used to address organised crime and crime related harm. The other new power will enable police to apply to the courts in this way where the person who owns the property is not in New Zealand. Current legislation does not allow this to happen. Again, the onus will be on those who claim to own the property or funds to prove that it was legit legitimately acquired. We are advised that the police investigation that police investigations are currently hindered by the limitations of the current law in that respect and we believe that these measures will hit organised crime where it hurts, which is their illegal profits. And I plan to introduce a bill to make these changes by the end of the year. If that answers your questions. Um, Mr Williams, mm -hmm. how many people, I think the NATS um, FPOs were going to capture about 600 people, how many people qualify under these border FPOs? Uh, well, uh, because of the, the qualifying, um, uh, qualifying um, offences, um, we expect about a 1,000 um, FPOs to be issued a year by the courts. And can you explain how your FPOs differ from nationals? 
Yes, they go much uh, wider than um, the Members Bill does. They capture people um, not just in, um, who associate in, in organised crime groups, but people who uh, uh, commit serious offences um, under Section 86 I think it's of the Sentencing Act, people who um, uh, qualify under the Terrorism Act. Uh, so it's a much broader group of people uh, that will be captured, but the most serious of offenders. And how far does that sort of conviction state? Uh, it will be, as somebody goes through the court, um, if they are charged with an offence under, under the, um, which is captured by the FPO, one of the serious offences, then they will, um, the, the judge can, at that stage, decide to impose a mm -hmm. violence like prohibition. A, a, retro, a retrospective thing, which is kind of going No, that's not years. my understanding. So, so the, the police commissioner won't have the power to, to apply the FPO to a gang member if he sees fit? They will have to qualify under what, what the, the qualifying um, so it has to offenses. So specifically commit a crime, the knowledge of the FPO. The FPO can't be applied to someone who's perceived as a gang member. If you are, if you are unable to, um, so you have to commit a crime, you have to be going through a court process. Um, if you qualify under the qualifying um, uh, the conditions of an FPO, which are you know serious offences, you wouldn't normally qualify for a firearms licence if you were subject to an FPO as well. Why so, 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 it's, so, so it's, 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 it's narrower than national bill, right? Because national bill uh, national allow, but allow police to, to apply those FPOs outside of the court process. Uh, but no, what is you have to actually be a, a serious offender and going through a court. What Nationals Bill did was only apply to uh, gang members. Do you so it's that, narrow. Because well, um, I think you considered a few different things that you like yeah. five years, ten years, and fifteen years yeah. taking back. Why didn't you go for one of those options? We're looking at people going through the current court process to be able to qualify under those conditions that have already set out. Why did you determine that that was the setting you wanted? Because that's the setting we wanted. I, I will say this is where our policy has landed. We've yet to go through um, the robust process through select committee as well. So some of those elements may be tested in that environment. What advice have you had about the impact that FPOs could have on Māori? Uh, we haven't had specific in information with that regard, but we, what we're dealing with we is the most the serious. As we, we, we're, we're dealing with the most serious offenders um, in this regard. It's not an issue of. Um, you know, that you raise, what it is about is dealing with the most serious offenders who would do us harm in terms of their... Except in the police consultation document, it does talk about the potential for disproportionate impact on Māori. So well, did you take that into consideration? The policy setting is to deal with the most serious offenders, and that is what the FPO that we are proposing is designed to do. What we will look at is um, having a very robust process going forward um, through the select committee and those ideas, those issues will be teased but out. What at that about point. The, the ability for people to be able to visit family and things so that you've taken that into account? Yes, so that's, some that's part of the issue. So um, someone who is subject to an FPO will not be able to associate and visit someone who um, who has firearms that are um, not secured. They also will not be able to attend things like gun clubs and uh, firearms dealers. However, um, they will be able to continue to associate with family and friends as long as those, those uh, people who have firearms have licences and have secured them. But they will not be able to, for example, um, uh, go with family to um, go hunting, for example, where firearms are being Given used. Given the um, disproportionate representation of Māori in police statistics and the allegations of systemic racism, shouldn't you be taking into account the impact of on Māori when you're well, what we're considering here is the most serious of offenders, and I've already given the list of the qualifying um, conditions for that. Can you explain the different threshold of the Criminal Proceeds Act? I mean, the police already have seemingly considerable powers to, to obtain assets from alleged organised crime groups. Yes, but the, the current regime has to draw a link between um, specific criminal activity uh, and, uh, and property or an asset. Um, the, the new proposal here is that if police believe that someone is uh, involved in organised crime um, and that they have property or own property um, that they believe that their legitimate income wouldn't be able to purchase, then it, uh, if the court agrees with that, the onus then goes on those who believe they might legitimately own that to prove that it has uh, come from legitimate sources. So they don't need to be charged with a crime, they don't need to be reported to the courts for any other matter, they could simply... No, if they, if they are associated with organised crime, uh, and, and the police believe um, that their property uh, couldn't be obtained 
by legitimate sources of income, then they have the ability to go to the court to test that. And again, the onus of proof will be on those who uh, would, 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 would profess that it is legitimately correct. Are you increasingly seeing, Mr. Tucker, are, you increase, are we increasingly seeing um, gang members driving around in flashy cars and, and holding flashy assets? I think there's um, evidence of that, and that's why we're making some of the changes. Um, another reason for the changes is that because of the current structure of the legislation, we are finding that gang leadership are structuring their affairs to remove themselves from the crime, but benefiting from the crime. Um, so in order to make sure that uh, we reduce that, um, and also, I think, take away an option for recruitment for gangs, because this is another way that they, they are recruiting young members to gangs, um, if the police can go to court uh, and argue the case that someone who is associated with a gang um, could not have uh, legitimately acquired the property or an asset, um, then the onus of proof is on those to prove that they legitimately uh, acquire those assets. Can you talk a bit, a bit more about that, that kind of recruitment aspect? Because we're hearing anecdotally out there about Mercedes rocking up to prisons and things, picking up people. Like, what, what, it, what it's not, it's not just... Um, Cars uh, and expensive items, it's, it's, it can be things that young people might find attractive that they are um, being given in order to do some of the work at, at a lower level. Oh, you know, I think it's clothes, shoes, etc. that um, you know, young people um, would find uh, you know, attractive uh, to be given if they're undertaking kind of low level activity for, for leadership. So, um, the, so, this, the, so this, is, um, this will be able to be dealt with um, both at the, the leadership end and also, I think, uh, as a deterrent to recruitment. Someone's handing over a whole lot of Air Jordans that would raise suspicion. That's the kind of thing that we have certainly seen evidence of. So you're flipping the onus of proof here, right? I mean, the, you know, yes. is it, so it's no longer innocent until proven guilty if you own a considerable amount of assets? Well, the, the onus will be on those who, who will claim that they have legitimately purchased the, this property to prove that. Uh, and if they can't, then the court uh, will have to say that the property is tainted. You're, you're saying basically you're, you're guilty from the outset. No, the, the offence will be that you cannot legitimately prove that the property was sourced from legitimate income. Is it, and this is a civil matter, not a criminal matter? Is it, it is a civil matter. Minister Williams, you said you wanted to prevent people from getting into gangs. How, do you, how are we going to do that? Uh, there is a, um, we want to take every opportunity um, to ensure that our young people don't get into gangs in the first place. There, there is a piece of work um, which we are... Um, uh, working on at the moment, which Kevin has just yet to make some decisions on, which we will be um, talking to you a little bit later about um, at some point, which hopefully will fill out the package a little bit more for you. If, if things like deprivation and poverty um, disproportionately affect the Māori, yes. yep. what's going to be done to sort that out to prevent people from getting mm -hmm. into the game? Uh, yeah, and obviously uh, we need to work much more in partnership with with iwi and our communities to address those issues, and that'll be part of the discussion that we have going forward. Are gangs a Māori problem? The gangs are a problem for all of our community. They're a whānau problem, um, and we all want to do as much as we can to keep our young people out of gangs. Well, that, going back to that police um, consultation document, it did say that Māori are more likely to be slagged with FPOs. Um, can you be sure that Māori aren't disproportionately going to be impacted by it is my absolute desire to ensure that we don't uh, continue um, to have disproportionate rates of, of um, uh, arrest and conviction for Māori. Uh, police are doing a, a lot of work in that space, currently looking at uh, who it is that they speak to and who it is that they charge, you know, their charging decisions, and I totally support that. I think that's part of a wider piece of work that we need to do as part of the justice sector. Um, but absolutely, I, you know, there's no denying that Māori and Pacific are disproportionately affected by the justice system. So in all aspects of the justice ecosystem, we need to do something to address that. And do you think the police are having to do that work because they've been getting it wrong today? I think the police will acknowledge that there have been inc instances, and you know, we can't deny that, where, um, where things have not gone as we would want them to happen. Police freely admit that, and I do as well. Um, but there are lots of opportunities for us across the whole justice system. In fact, um, it's not just justice, it's a whole of government response, what actually drives people into, um, into crime in the first place, and that's a whole lot of social um, harms as well. So there's, a lots of, there's lots of work to do in that space. Um, Minister Farfoy and I certainly have got um, large pieces of that to, to work together on, and uh, we will be doing so. Does your government still intend to... 
foreign licensing agency? And where would we go? Uh, we are still working on that. Uh, Cabinet hasn't decided on the final um, uh, makeup of that. So, yeah, those decisions will be coming out in due course. And what are you doing to like, reform the, the licensing and the environment control system? I mean, FBO is one, one tool, but um, you know, there's still significant issue inside the firearm licensing system. I mean, you know, pressure, delays, you know, everything that, that you know, things can fall through the crack, cracks. What are you doing? Yeah, and uh, that was one of the key findings of the um, RCOI uh, into March 15, that, uh, that, that that system is not fit for purpose. I freely admit that, and the police do too. And we are working as cabinet to come to finalise the, the decisions on what the final look of that. So, uh, nothing has been done since December last uh, year. No, the police have been working on ensuring that they're getting on top of the um, delays. Um, they've uh, <coughs> employed um, some more staff to, to uh, support that process, and uh, there has already been work underway. However, the final look of the uh, registry has yet to be decided, but that's not far away. That, that will take some sense, that will take some sensitive policing mm -hmm. uh, and also understanding uh, of the structures of how gangs uh, operate uh, and to be fair that already happens now um, and I, the, the issues that you raise about um, um, throughout this press conference about Maori being disproportionately affected again applies here mm -hmm. so you know so we've also asked um, justice TPK um, Crown law to look at those issues because we have do have um, you know uh, a strain within these proposals about um, those involved and associated with gangs, and I think we need to be sure that we draw a very clear distinction of what association is and isn't, uh, and making sure we get that line right is uh, some extra work that we've asked officials to do. do. You trust the police force currently to apply that sensitive policing in this case. I absolutely do. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, look, I, I, I think uh, we would want uh, police to use their time resourcefully and efficient and effectively, um, and they do that now. Um, what, what the constraint for them is, is that it's extremely resource intensive to try and prove um, that the um, property is gained by legitimate purposes under current settings. So they will make some of those decisions about whether or not it's worth pursuing issues. No, that, no this, is, this is a manifesto commitment that the Labour Party made at the last election uh, and we're fulfilling that promise. Do you have any idea of the kind of money that you So the officials have um, told us that they forecast that this will bring in potentially another $25 million per annum to the proceeds of crime fund, uh, which is not insignificant. Uh, again, that is a, an initial forecast. Um, uh, once we get the law into place, um, and depending on how effective the police are, um, bringing these issues to court, um, we would hope that that would make a significant dent in the income of um, organised crime. Yeah, Williams, on um, Operation Topedo, mm. is that just the usual busts that dressed up under a new heading? Absolutely not. Uh, this is uh, um, uh, where um, uh, uh, gang crime is elevated. Um, the police are directing resources uh, and effort to ensure that we disrupt that um, heightened gang activity, um, uh, and that's what Operation Topedo has been designed to do, to dampen down those hot spots as they have appeared. What happens after that is the important piece. Um, you know, the police have relationships with gangs um, and, you know, talk, are talking to them all the time and are wanting to disrupt it when it gets um, hugely elevated. But what we have to do is the piece that, that, that comes with ensuring that we keep people out of gangs in the first place. And then when they are in gangs, um, that there are <coughs> opportunities for us to intervene to help them um, you know, get out of that process as well. So but is there actually additional resource and funding for it's, operational it, Tofiro? Tofiro is a, a direct and targeted and much more clinical um, uh, 
operation towards that gang activity that's elevated. Is there additional funding or resource specifically for Operation Kangaroo? No, it's 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 a it's an Basically operation. It's an yeah yeah it's an operation as police do operations. So it's just yeah. a usual bus stressed up under a new. However, bike. it has actually been very effective already in the last eight weeks or so, and I've already commented um, quite a bit about the the amount that has you know the guns that have been. Um, uh, sees that the, the rest have been made. Anyway? Uh, when we are in a period where, um, at this stage, and it happens from time to time, we're gonna, where gang activity is heightened, and this is um, a response that the police are saying needs to happen. Um, when it's elevated, you'd need to do something much more clinical and uh, ensure that you can dissipate that activity, and then work on the prevention and intervention so work that happens. I, I don't think anybody would would um, not characterise some of the events that have been happening over recent weeks and months as not elevated. Do you expect that 501 deportees will be um, captured by these respective changes? Well, it depends yeah, on, yeah. Uh, well, in terms of the separate changes, then it, it really will depend on if the police can prove the case as to whether or not their, their property wasn't sourced legitimately. Um, Mr Williams, were you happy with how the recent gun buyback is run? Yes, I have been, yeah. Do you, did you get as many guns as you expected? Uh, I think we're on. Yes, I think, I think we're on target to get as, as many as we thought we were going to get. Well, just over 600 were to, uh, you know, handed in and buy back, but the estimate the was buyback. around mm. 2,400. I think we've still got a little bit of that to go. I think we're just winding that up now, and the final report will show that um, it's been successful. What's the estimate for how many illegal, or now illegal guns are still out there? I, I couldn't give you. I couldn't give you that number, that and that's part of that's part of the reason that we need to have a register, so that we have an, an idea of, of the guns that are in our community. We don't know that figure, so it would be impossible for me to make um, make an estimate. Have you, of that. Have you asked them for an estimate? They have some. They have some guns. In yeah, they do. Um, but what I'm saying is that we have no idea how many how many guns are in circulation. We have no idea how many guns are owned. I we need to. Do you, have you asked police for an estimate? Uh, I've given lots of information from police about uh, guns that are out there, but I, I think you're kind of missing the point here. The point is actually we need to get a better handle on what is in the community and our gun register will go some way to doing that. Can I just ask you again um, about the, um, what we talked about over the weekend, the um, 1800 police. Mm -hmm. You said that you're only at 1400, so does that mean that the coalition promise was broken last term? No, no, growth. So there were two, there were two, um, there was 1,800 new police and also a growth of 1,800. So um, we are on target to meet that by 2023, which is what I said on the weekend. Just one more mm -hmm. um, Last week, I had a series of stories about um, police's counter terror team, um, specifically around uh, you know, the intelligence gathering and such. I mean, did you, what's, what's happening in that space under your watch? And it's, it appears to be a significant I think I'll come back to you on that. Um, that's a, 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 a bigger piece of work. There, there is quite a yeah. There's, there's quite a bit of work happening in that space. Perhaps we can um, have another conversation about that um, another time. Perhaps not appropriate this time. That's what message you were trying to send with this. Well, obviously, tack, um, tackling uh, organised crime is a priority for the government, um, both through the FPOs and by you know. Um, Cracking down on income sources um, and deterrence um, is something that we committed to do at the election, and we're doing it. Mm -hmm. We want to keep our community safe. This is one tool, um, a couple of tools that we're uh, are introducing today, but there, there is more to come, and uh, uh, it's, it's really about public safety at the end of the day. National's just going to say you're stealing their ideas. Uh, we, uh, we, are, we are looking at this in a much more extensive way. Uh, you'll be aware that. Um, uh, Simeon Brown's bill has had to have significant rewrites. We want to make sure that when we introduce the legislation, we get it absolutely right. Uh, that's why we're, we're taking the time to do this properly. Thanks, everyone. Thank Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. We'll let you unpack. Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll let you, yeah. <laughs>